this is going to comprise uh, three or four little tutorials um, where eventually we end up with what we see on the screen at the moment with this uh, forest clearing with some dappled sunlight with a ferns etc etc so we're going to look at multi-layered ecosystems uh, painted ecosystems and how to produce dappled sunlight so our starting point will be a simple two-dimensional plane that fills up our viewport i've already added a base material it's just a simple material based on a fractal which is there okay so it's grainy fractal and a color map which shows us our shades of brown fairly simple i had a little bit of um, bump just to make the place a little bit more interesting so let's go ahead and create our first ecosystem because this is going to provide several details which we can carry through onto the other layers so what we're going to do is we're going to add some plants i like to start with the smaller plants first and we're going to make use of the multiple selection tool which will appear as this when we first open up view so we're going to click on the triangle look at the current selection so i'm going to select this plant press ctrl click and click so i have three plants selected go ahead and click the tick box and view will load them straight in uh, to the ecosystem at this stage before i go any further i need some scale reference i need to know how big these plants are so i'm going to add steve steve's a very helpful man he often helps in my renders just to get a, an appreciation of scale within the scene. And I'm also going to set up a layer for the plane because once we populate this with instances, it may get quite heavy. And uh, putting it on separate on a separate layer means we can make it invisible, which means it, it'll reduce the, the system load. So let's go back to our material and let's populate and see what we get. Now we can see immediately that these small plants are far too large. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce them in scale. And let's see what we get by refreshing the, the viewport. I'm also going to make that one larger, but reduce the whole scale of the ecosystem. And let's see what we get now. Okay, I'm going to have to do a quick preview render just to see how that looks because the um, preview window is not big enough so we, we can see that we've successfully scaled down the small ferns but the small grass field plant is too large let's try again populate a quick preview render okay that that's fine for now we may revisit this later but uh, whilst we're building up the ecosystems um, i'll leave the final tweaking for the end scene one thing i do want to do is i want to control the density at least a little better than just saying you know just letting view make a decision so i'm going to do a variable density and i'm going to edit the function editor make some space to work and i'm going to set up a very quick filter so that i can uh, tweak the distribution of these items i'm going to add a simple fractal and i'm going to add a opposite filter okay so we're going to connect those through to the density and connect the filter through to the simple fractal let's tweak the simple fractal because i want uh, a sensible distribution i.e i want some patches to be um, visible in the scene okay so what we're seeing is uh, a situation where we have white, pretty much black or shades of grey. So white is 100% density, black is zero density, grey somewhere in between. Now we can tweak that by just increasing the gain. So we get harder edges to our patch. So if I make that a dynamic ecosystem, we can see what's happening in the preview window as we go. So you can see now we're getting some open areas, but I want to increase the functionality here. So I'm just going to export or publish some of the features. Now, the largest feature in this particular uh, setup 
is what controls the ratio of black to white. So you can see I don't want massive areas populated. I just want these small patches. So I've done an opposite filter so that I reverse the black and the white. So I'm going to publish some parameters. Publish, and I'm going to call this empty patch size. We're going to have to define a group for it, and it's going to be in the group, which is distribution. All the group does is it, it uh, groups all of the functions related to this material all together in one place. Okay, so I'm also going to publish the gain. And I'm going to put hard edge to patch. Because that uh, is going to determine basically isolated patches as opposed to overall coverage. So you can see immediately these two items have changed. They've gone to green. And that means they've been published to the front end. Now that means that we can actively change without hitting the function editor. So I can reduce that right down. And you can see we get much more coverage. Whereas if I move it up, we get isolated patches. Okay. So here, you know, by increasing the number means we get a harder edge to the patch. It doesn't filter out. Lower it right down and you'll see the effect we get. He said confidently. Preview. So it's a little bit more spread out. It's just a fine tune, if anything else. Now, the reason I've gone ahead and published those parameters will become apparent when I add my new layer of ecosystem. What it means is I can right click on that function, copy it, click on this layer, variable density, and paste that function. And because the parameters have been published, they will appear in the next layer of ecosystem. So in this layer of ecosystem, I'm going to add some mushrooms. Let's have a look at what we've got in the current selection. We've got Steve. We don't want multiple Steves in our scene. What we want is multiple mushrooms. So I'm going to click on one, then press Control, click on the others, and add them. So we have our mushrooms. Let's go ahead and populate very quickly to see what we get. Okay, so you can see we've got patches of mushrooms, but they coincide with where the plants are. You can see here they're very, very dense. So I'm going to sort that out by reducing the density and avoid overlapping instances. So now we've got a much more scattered arrangement. Again, we can tweak this a little bit further. Populate. We're down to 1,367 instances might increase the density a little bit more, populate. But again, this is fine tuning for later. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another layer of ecosystem. I'm gonna variable density it again, and we're going to add some instances. And what we're going to add on this layer are some sticks. These sticks have been produced using photogrammetry, not by myself. Um, I acquired these from the store. No, we don't want a trunk, but we want a stick. Got our four items, so we'll add them. It may take a few seconds for you to chug through these. Remember, the more instances you select, the longer it will take for you to um, add them all. But we've got them all. We don't want a 50% density, but we'll do a preview. There we go. So we can see them starting to enter. They're a little bit too large for my liking. So I'm going to scale them down. Preview. And again, we'll tweak the distribution so that they go into some of those open areas. Let's see what we've got now. Still far too many sticks. So we'll just reduce the density a little bit more. Do a quick preview render. And again, more fine tuning later. OK. And we're going to add one more layer of ecosystem. This is where the ferns come in, which were sourced from uh, Quixel. So these are objects. And what we're going to do is get rid of our previous selection, go back to my favorites. And I'm going to click 
on the three ferns and I'm going to add them. Again, dependent upon the size of the file that you're adding and how many you're adding, it may take you a little bit of wire, uh, time to, to chug through and, and load all of the assets. So they're in, we want variable density again, so we'll paste the function again and we'll tweak the scaling because a difference of size one is far too much and we'll populate. Now they're coming through again, this is why my assistant Steve is in the scene so we can see how big the ferns are relative to himself. So I'm going to just increase the scale, populate, because I want them to be quite well established, healthy specimens. And we also need to just check our distribution. Okay, and let's do a test render. At the moment, we're not seeing much of the uh, the very first layer that we put in the small plants. So I think I might go back to that first layer up here, rename it. I'm going to rename it small plants. It's a good uh, discipline to get into, adding names for layers. It does make life a lot easier, and especially as we are planning to save out this ecosystem so we can use it over and over and over again. So now we can see the smaller plants are coming through. We can see the mushrooms. We can see the ferns. So at this point, I'm going to go back through and I'm going to make them dynamic populations, see what they are, and name the layers accordingly. Mushrooms. We'll call this one sticks. And the last one is going to be ferns. And we'll rename the whole thing because this is, let's call it woodland ground cover. Excellent. So that's okay. And we'll go ahead and we'll save that material. Remember, we don't want to redo this over and over and over and over. So I would save this and I think I already have. Um can't see it at the moment because we're waiting for view to refresh all of the different materials I've got here but we'll save that as woodland ground cover copy that paste that and save okay so that's saved out or oh, it's not it's just writing the file okay good done so that's part one of our scene. Let's just rotate it back so we're not seeing any of the, the ground because we want the scene to, to, to fill the viewport. In the next video, we'll look at uh, importing an asset and looking at uh, a global ecosystem of mushrooms. If you remember back in our very first image, let's go back to the first image. Just remind ourselves of where we're heading. So we're going to look at importing this log these mushrooms and possibly a little bit more tweaking on the material. I hope you found this useful. Please look for us on uh, social media and give us some feedback. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.